Hello, today I'd like to show you a brief demo of Pivotal 1. We'll begin by looking at how to set up Pivotal CF. First we'll need to tell Pivotal CF about our vCenter, so we'll provide the IP address and credentials. Next we'll fill out the network name, data center name, cluster name, and data store name to tell it what components we want to use. We'll then specify an IP subnet and also tell Pivotal CF about the IP addresses that we'd like to reserve. We may have used these for other purposes. We'll also provide it with our DNS and our gateway IP addresses. Finally, we'll provide it with the address of a time server so that we can keep our server's times in sync. Next, we'd like to add the Elastic Runtime service. We'll tell Pivotal CF the domain we'd like to use for the system and applications. We'll also tell it the IP address that we'd like to assign to the router. Finally, we'll take a look at the resource sizes for the various Pivotal CF components. And now we'll click Install. So notice here we have a split screen view of the Pivotal CF installer on the left and our vCenter client on the right. What I'd like you to take a look at is as the installation is progressing, you'll see various actions taking place in vCenter. This demonstrates that Pivotal CF is taking full control of the underlying vSphere IaaS layer, spinning up all of the machines that it needs to deploy the various Cloud Foundry components. Now let's take a look at how to deploy applications to Pivotal CF. We're starting with a look at the Pivotal CF web console, which as you can see has no apps deployed. We're now going to go to the command line client and do a CF target to make sure we're targeting the right Cloud Foundry instance. Then take a look at our manifest to see what our application metadata looks like. And then finally we'll do a CF push. We're binding the web route to the application, uploading the application bits. And now our Java build pack is kicking in and pulling down the Java runtime and the other components necessary to create what's called a droplet, which is the runtime plus application bits in a single package. We then deploy that to our execution agent and start up the application. And so now when we refresh the web console, we can see that the Sagan application is deployed. We click on the URL and we see now the Spring.io website, which we use to run our entire community of Spring application developers from around the world. So now I'd like to show you how easy it is to add application hosting capacity to your instance of Pivotal CF. So we'll go back into the Elastic Runtime configuration and take a look at the status of our Elastic Runtime VMs. You can see right now that we only have one execution agent running. We're going to go back into the Settings section for Elastic Runtime and click on Resource Sizes. We'll now increase the number of execution agents to two. We save that configuration and again click on Install Updates. So Pivotal CF is now comparing the current state of the system with the desired state of the system. It sees that we need to add an additional execution agent to our environment and it deploys that. It leaves all of the other components untouched. Now we can go back to the status section for the Elastic Runtime and we'll see that we now in fact have exactly two DEAs running in our system. So now let's see how we apply the same installation and management capabilities we used for Pivotal CF Elastic Runtime to our Hadoop distribution, Pivotal HD, and also our real-time analytics platform, Pivotal AX. We'll begin by adding both the Pivotal HD and the Pivotal Analytics products to our Pivotal CF installation. Notice we have the same ability to configure the resource sizing for each of the VMs that makes up those distributions. And we click Install Updates. It's exactly as when we deployed the Elastic Runtime, updating and adding only the components necessary and leaving everything else in place. Now let's begin to harness the power of the Pivotal Analytics data service. We'll begin by using the Pivotal CF command line client to create an instance of a Pivotal Analytics service. Our intention is to use this to analyze events coming out of our Spring.io application. We'll then bind that service to the Sagan app, allowing us to consume those events. We log into the Pivotal Analytics dashboard, 
and we're going to create an application instruments data source. We will name it after our Spring I.O. website, give the URL, walk through the rest of the wizard, and we will have had our data source created. Now we're going to click on this information icon and copy and paste a section of JavaScript very similar to that we would use for example with the Google Analytics data service. We will paste that into the layout for the Sagan application, rebuild, and then simply re-push the application. When the push process is complete and the application starts up, as we start to interact with it from various browsers, the application will start to send events into the Pivotal Analytics service. So now let's take a look at what happens when those events start streaming into Pivotal Analytics. We'll take a look first at the raw events that are being streamed in using that JavaScript that we pasted into the application. We can also take a look at a dashboard of various charts that are automatically created by Pivotal Analytics to look at the various metrics that are coming out of that JavaScript. And we can also look at dashboards we're able to create for various graphs of interest to us. For example, event time by page title and page distribution. So now I'd like to show you how to apply a popular continuous delivery technique called blue-green deployments to your apps on Pivotal CF. So notice the application is now deployed as Sagan Blue, but we also have this Spring I.O. route mapped to it and that's the URL that we give to our users. And so when they hit Spring I.O., they're going to be routed to the Sagan Blue app. We now make a change from enterprise to platform, we rebuild the app, and now we're going to re-push it as Sagan Green. So when this process is complete, both the Sagan Blue containing the old version of the application and Sagan Green containing the new version of the app will be deployed side by side. Finally, we we'll use the Pivotal CF command line client again to map the Spring I.O. route to the Sagan Green application as well. We're back now in the web console and we can see that the two apps are deployed side by side with the route applied to both. And so now when we visit Spring I.O we can see the router is load balancing between the two application instances. So now convinced that our application is good to go, we unmap the Spring I.O. route. We return to the web console, look at Sagan Green and see that it's now the only app with Spring I.O. mapped to it and now this becomes the production application. And So that concludes our demo. I'd like to invite you to visit us at gopivotal.com to learn more about Pivotal CF.